What it do, good people? Coming back at y'all live from Ted's TV. Man, we had about 33, 34 people that went D1 in my mind. 32 to 33. Reason why it's 32 to 33, because I don't know if Dark Pack went to school. I don't. You know what I'm saying? But hey, he's on the list. Mike Mike Jones, he went to, he went to Juco with me. He on the list, Southwestern. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I'm going to start this list off with yours true. Taz Dane, Georgia State. Pool Bass, Texas Tech. Jamal, TCU. Dipper, Portland State. Tar Galloway, Florida State. Mo St. John's. Damon Jennifer, Loyola. Keith, Virginia. Tion Curl, Wagner. Tay, UNLV. Darnell, I want to say he went to Murray State, right? I want to say he went to Murray State. Jarvis Wiggins, Maryland Eastern Shore, Dark Snowden, Villanova. Y'all be sleeping on that. Y'all sleep on that. Y'all sleep on that. And I think because he went to Spalding. Well, anyway, Dark Snowden, Villanova. Reggie Bryant, Villanova. Melvin Scott, UNC. David Lund, Northwestern, and, and Delaware. Dark Good, Towson. Zeke Johnson, UNLV, Larry Tucker, Kyle State, uh, Tory Butler, Coastal Carolina, Draper Ann Nardo, College of, uh, uh, College of Charleston. You got Kenny Miner, Manhattan, D. Brown, Charlotte, Tim Lyles, West Virginia, Sean Hatton, BCU, Devon Haskins, uh, Louisiana Tech, Jermaine Robinson, Towson, Gail Goodrich, Howard, Mookie, UTEP, Kimi, Robert Morris, uh, Karan from Emerson, I don't know I don't know if he went to school at the college, but he was serious. You know what I'm saying? Calvin Dyson, you know what I mean? Towson. Like yeah, I mean I'm honored. I'm honored to be a part. I'm not y'all not know that name. Y'all don't gotta give us our respect, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't gotta give us our glory. You know what I'm saying, with Kodak? But hey, the facts is out there. We get to beat whatever y'all want to debate anytime. Like I said, if you want to talk about it, let's we got we got we got to put, put everything in perspective. And our there was so many out the guards, point guards, shooting guards, and well, point guards and shooting guards. It, it was the, it was duos down there in every school. Duos in every school. You know, you know what I'm saying, like. It was thick. And the things that I like to know, see, y'all be wanting to talk about basic shit. I be wanting to know, what was you thinking? What player, what was the player, that, what scenario that you didn't hear when we played? You know what I'm saying? They could be any team in any city. Because we, we, we all heard little stories and things of that nature. We we just want to find out if these things true. You know what I'm saying? What, what players... That you played against and you knew, like, oh, I got him tomorrow. It's going to be tough. Oh, I got him tomorrow. I'm going to fuck him up. Because it was one or the other in Baltimore City. Come on. I don't know how it is now, but that's how it was. Just give us our glory. You got the Baltimore dudes. Baltimore. Oh my God! Wow. You know what I mean? They they brought, talking about they, grimy they, dudes. They, they thought you know they mean? was the most they they people Chicago. ever.
Brett Walbrook. The headliner matchup had the sixth ranked Panthers up its number nine Southwestern. And it was all Sabres from the giddy up as Mike Jones was the real deal. First, he gets it going with the alley-oop on the break. Then the senior steps out to drain the three-pointer. And then again, Jones dials three, and this time he draws the foul. He had nine quick points as the Sabres jumped out to a 12-2 lead. And they weren't done to check out Earl Carr as Jones shows he could also pass the ball as well. 18-6 Southwestern after one. More of the same in the second. Carr on the break, and you can shoot one more, Earl. He had 16 on the night, and it was 25-12 Southwestern. Mike Jones wasn't through just yet himself. With two defenders all over him, he still gets the fadeaway to go. And then on transition, he glides through two more defenders en route to the deuce. Jones led everybody with 26 points, and it was 39-22 Sabres at the half. But St. Francis tried to rally in the third quarter. Terrence Withers with a great no-look pass to Tim Payne underneath. Look out below as Payne led the Panthers with 21, and the lead was cut to nine after three. St. Francis seemed to have the momentum after this tough layup from Terrence Withers. He had 11 points on the night, and they trailed it by seven with plenty of time still left. But Southwestern would prove to be too strong in the end. Jones slices through the D and feeds Jamal Johnson. Johnson pitched in 14 to Southwestern defeat St. Francis 75 to 55 in the game they truly dominated. What a great way to start off the season for Southwestern. A team with a losing record just a year ago comes into the function at the junction and pulls off a big upset. Certainly they hope this leads to confidence for the rest of the year. It's always great winning the first game. And to beat a quality team like St. Francis, who every year is in the top ten, who's won maybe, what, four out of five Catholic League championship. I mean, you know, there's no description other than they're a terrific team. And to beat a terrific team with a pretty good team, that's always a good thing. And this has to be a great start to the season. Let everybody know we ain't no sorry team. We back in it. Uh, they know we back in it again. Friday night before a capacity crowd at Spalding. And the Owls' Keith Jennifer wasted no time getting them started with this drive to the bucket. Isaac Brooks answers with a three of his own. He would finish with 13 on the night as the Cavaliers were looking to raise the roof. Despite trailing by as many as 15 during the contest, Towson Catholic showed why they're a force in the Catholic League with strong inside play by senior Steve Johnson. He'd lead the Owls with 15 for the contest. Cavaliers standout Derek Snowden kept the Owls off balance with drives to the bucket for two of his 12, and the Cavs would take a commanding nine-point lead into the intermission. The Cavaliers would increase the lead in the second half with help from Serbian native Alexander Pavlovich. He'd finish with 15, but the Owls fight back and take the lead at the end of the third with this amazing half-court shot by Steve Johnson at the buzzer. Could the upset be brewing? It was 54-52 TC. The lead went back and forth through the fourth. With time expiring in regulation, Darren Johnson takes the nice feed from James Bowen. He puts it up and in to send the contest into overtime. The lead would change hands six times in the extra period before Derek Snowden takes control, puts the rock up and in for the dramatic overtime win over a tough thousand Catholic school. Championship played in front of a packed house at Walbrook High School. Number two Dunbar, 19 and three, faced off against the 12th ranked Southwestern Sabres, 14 and eight. The Sabres got on track quickly. Tyrone Cooper takes the outlet pass from Earl Moore and lays it up off the glass. He would put on a clinic in the next two minutes and open up a 9-2 lead for Southwestern. Cooper would finish the match with 23 points. But Dunbar climbs right back into it and takes the lead using muscle on the inside. Ray Akinola puts the money in the bank to push the Poets on top by five. Dantez Dean would then follow suit with a jam of his own and a game-high 24 points. But the Sabres cut the halftime deficit to four as Marr serves one up in the inside to, you guessed it, Tyrone Cooper. It was 31-27, done for seconds of the third. Senior guard Tyrone Dantzler picks up foul number four, and Dunbar takes advantage of the misfortune. 
Here the Poets start the offense with defense. Dean gets the outlet down court to Lafonte Johnson, who lays it up and in. Johnson with 21 on the night. Next up is more teamwork. Time for the no-look feed inside to Pierre Tucker. And the Poets opening up the lead. Again, it's Tucker this time for the jumper to move out in front by 15 with a minute 50 to go. The Poets outscore the Sabres in the third, 25 to 12, taking a 56-39 lead heading into the fifth. And all that was left was pride for the Sabres. They did their best to make it respectable. But the candy goes to the Dunbar Poets who made good on last year a sweet title victory over Southwestern. This is still Sam and still live, you know. We just happen to be a part of it. You know, we just thank God for the success that we've had all year long. I'm glad we got this, so we're going to, we, we in the, we're in the streets. We're going to uh, play on cards. Hopefully we can back and forth through how it's going to say that we did last year. Pompey's Redskins from Edmondson looking to improve on last year's seven-win season. They needed to come out strong against a tough Delaney Lions scoring attack led by senior forward Romus Kriwanis. Lions 12 and 10 last season worked the ball into Romus all night. And he took advantage of some good power moves to the bucket while drawing the foul. Now Edmondson's Eddie Colbert got the Redskins moving in the right direction, working the ball around the perimeter and getting good movement on the inside for the three-point plays. Edmondson from early on looked as though this would be their night, and Colbert's as well, as he drills this 15-foot J, which just skins a comfortable lead going into the break. But the Lions would steal the show in the second half, once again taking advantage of a strong inside game and good penetration from Colin Stevens, who finished with eight points to Delaney out front, commanding lead. Now Edmondson fought back to within three with just over a minute to go, but Delaney would reverse every comeback bid with a fancy score of their own to hold on for the opening night victory over Edmondson, 65 to 60. Number 13, Lake Clifton, arrived at Merville looking for the consistency they've been lacking all season. But the number five Mustangs going for win number 10 in a row were not looking to be denied. And Merville got out of the gate quickly, led by All-Metro senior guard Marcus Hatton. He makes the nice move to the paint for the jumper in the early lead. The Lakers' Andre Mazzone, who finished with 17 on the contest, kept his team close. But Merville would open up an 11-point lead midway in the second. Kevin Taylor hits two of his 10. But Team Carroll and the Lakers would battle back with a 17-5 run near the end of the half to take a one-point lead into the intermission. Carroll led the Lakers with 20 points. After the break, the Lakers showed why they are finally coming together as a team showing strong muscle on the inside. Brandon Houghton finished with 18 points and 16 boards on the night. Kenneth Cornell would add 12 of his own, and the Lakers pulled way out in front with 13 unanswered points to start the third. Marcus Hatton did everything he could to pull the Mustangs close. He finished with a game-high 33 points. But that couldn't make up for 22 turnovers and a powerful, even attack led by the Lakers. They go on to upset number five, Mervo, and send a message to the rest of the league that'll be reckoned with come the 4A North Regional Playoff. First off, my brother, I'd like to say thank you for inviting me. It's an honor and a pleasure to actually be involved in something like this, especially what's going on. Um, uh, my name is Derek Snowden. Um, I went to Archbishop Spalding High School, and that's in Severn, Maryland, and I attended Villanova University for college. As far as high school and AAU, whew, I mean, I played from anywhere from PG Jaguars to Running Rebels with uh, Coach Ralph Burley, who honestly made me the player I was and am to this day. So shout out to Ralph Burley. I still love you. And yes, yes, I still love you. And yes, <laughs> if it wasn't for you, a lot of things would have been different for me. But, you know, back to the basketball aspect of things. Um, very competitive. I mean, in Baltimore City, you know, if you wasn't tough, if you wasn't gritty, if you wasn't somebody who really could handle pressure, 
you know, playing in Baltimore City, you will break at some point. All of those guys shaped my game in some way, shape, or form, like competing against those guys. Um, AAU-wise, I mean, I was everywhere from Tim Thomas players to uh, Baltimore Select, uh, Oliver Owls. Shout out to Coach Bucky Lee, rest in peace. Um, he was a real instrumental influence, part of a... Uh, my growth as a competitor in basketball, um, you know, practicing in Oliver Gyms was definitely one of the tougher experiences um, in Baltimore. But if you could play in that gym and make it out of there with respect, you, you could pretty much play anywhere in the country, I felt like. So. Big, work hard, you're going to be good. But if you come here, play around, you're going to stay the same. You're not going to get better. Crab ball, let's go. I love it. I love it. I love it. I make moves, make moves, make grooves, make grooves like a stampede when I'm coming through, coming through. I'm a win, I never learn how to lose, how to lose. You me, I ain't like a southern dude. Put the dude, okay, the greatest is here. Jump a reserve in space. I put that work in for years. In and out of the state, I'm just an artist you fear. I can tell by your face, cause I'm scarring the bit and y'all try your best to escape. See, now I know this, I'm so in focus. Y'all haters bold, get some slicks out inside the safe house. I feel like Tobin, I own this, I'm pure dopeness. You want some broke shit, oh no, bitch, I'm locked and loaded. I control this. I run rap like an athlete in the track. Me Teammates, yeah, I mean, I went to Archbishop Spartan, like I said, um. When I went to Oxford Spot and I played with uh, James Bowen, Tremaine Robinson, Batman, Darren Johnson, Isaac Brooks. Um, there's a lot of upper class and I'm forgetting right now at the top of my head. Jason Campion, um, Joe Petroselli, Jimmy Dent, Aaron Masters. Well, it was paired down to two as the fifth ranked St. Francis Panthers at 12 and 9 squared off against number two Archbishop Spaulding. The Cavaliers coming in at 28 and 4, but missing seven foot center Derek Good, their top scorer and rebounder, out with a broken foot. Early on, Serbia native Alexander Pavlovich filled in admirably. He scored 12 of his game high 18 points in the first half. Here it's Alexander again with the putback, tying things up at 11 late in the first half. St. Francis, though, gets a hoop from Cheyenne Patty, all alone on the inside. It stakes the Panthers to a 13 11 lead at the end of one. The Panther defense was KG2, forcing the turnover. Lamont Keaton, who feeds Tavon McCoy. He goes in for the deuce. Again, though, it's Alexander for three, evening things up at 17 with five minutes to go in the second. Lamont Keaton keeps Spalding honest. Watch him follow the miss like you're supposed to and make good on a second try. Derek Snowden then drives the lane for this pretty finish. Spalding takes a 27-26 lead into the half. The teams would combine for only 13 points in a slow-moving third quarter. The defensive highlight comes up with Spaulding's Tremaine Robinson rejecting the attempt. The pace picked up in the fourth. Spaulding's Tremaine Robinson teams up with Darren Johnson for the neat give and go. Then the Slamont Keaton putback puts St. Francis back in it 45-42 with three minutes to go. James Bowen has the answer though. He skies over the defender for two more to push the lead back to six. The Cavaliers' defense, though, tightens up. It forces the Panthers into the turnover. And down the stretch, Spaulding hits the free throws, the sign of a championship team to claim its first-ever Catholic League tournament title over St. Francis. We were able to get the ball inside off the penetration, and I think that helped us going offensively, and the rest was hard. The rest was hard. Everybody had doubts about how we was playing and things like that. Like, sometimes we'd be like, Underrated, overrated. So I think like we proved to everybody that we we the number one team in the country. The best players I feel like I played against um back in my AAU days in Baltimore definitely um without a doubt Marcus Hatton um Mo was he was extravagant <laughs> back in those days. Um, Yo, the toughest so person you went up against in college? Yeah, <sighs> Marcus Hatton was tough. Yo, listen. Oh my God, yo, that's one of my favorite players in the world. What? You know what? You know what I had over him? Yo, Marcus. I was, he was like Iverson. He was just like Bubba Chuck. He's the closest thing to AI. Yeah. The closest I thing, was bro. More efficient than them niggas. Oh my God.
I used to love Marcus Hatton, bro. I'm talking about a real fan, yo. I used to that love nigga him, yo. Boy, like he in the park everywhere you go. And you know what's so crazy? He had a, a, a long ass career overseas, yo. I bet. Yeah, yeah, a long ass career over there. They weren't letting him nowhere near the league, though. I think he tried out for a few teams, but like his style is like he need the ball. You know what I'm saying? If he would have been in the league and somebody would have let him get off, he would have been a star in the league too. You know, the Jennifers, Keith, Dame Andrew, I mean, those guys were explosive. I mean, you can go back to Mark Karcher, um, to Juan Dixon, I mean, you name it to Hampton, the list goes on and on and on. Um, you, Taz, um, D. I mean, it was a lot of great guys that came out of that area. Mook, I'm probably forgetting some. Woodley, I mean, they were everywhere. Like you know, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't get catch a break. So. <laughs> I feel like I was really, really like ready. I, I really feel like everything was preparation for me. And, you know, like I vividly remember I was playing, um, I was actually playing with Oliver I was, um, first year. Um, I was down there and I remember having a game. I wasn't playing too well. I wasn't getting a lot of playing time in the BNBL. I was <laughs> extremely upset about that. Uh, sorry about that, Bucky. but. Um, and I remember that year, you know, I, I, I decided not to play and go to the Nationals. Um, I think it was my going my sophomore year, going into my junior year. Um, so I didn't go to Nationals, but, you know, the plan for me was, you know, I wasn't going to sit around and do nothing. So Coach Ralph Burley got me a membership to um, a local gym. Uh, I think it was Gold's Gym, and he got me a personal trainer. And I had a couple camps to go to, um, which was like uh, ABCD, Adidas camp. At the time, it was like one of the most prestigious camps. Um, that and Nike, Eastern Invitationals, and I believe um, um, Five Star Invitationals as well. Um, and I, I went to Adidas camp, and I think the preparation of having a personal trainer and for that whole first maybe five to seven weeks of AAU, I was training I felt like I was training like a professional back then, you know, as far as what they had me doing. But I went into that camp, and, you know, I kind of came out of that camp after that camp as like, you know, top five point guard in the country. Um, I think I was ranked 75, 73rd or 75th best player in the country after that. And a lot of notoriety came. And um, I think after that, it was like, it gave me the, the 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 confidence in my mind to know, okay, yeah, I am as good as like everybody else. You know, I I feel like I'm that good. I feel like I'm, you know, I can compete, you know, with anybody you put in front of me. But I think that like that validated it. And then back from my uh, Adidas camp, um, as far as awards, uh, I won. Um, I think I won Baltimore Catholic League Player of the Year. Um, once, once or twice. I can't remember. I think it was once. Um, shoot. I mean, at Adidas camp, I made the all-star team. Um, five-star camp, I mean, I came back with most outstanding player from five-star camp maybe four times. I mean, I think at five-star camp, I won almost every award they could possibly give out throughout the tenure of my, my years in a uh, in high school, um, I was able to play in the Jordan Classic back then, um, Verizon Center with uh, some of the best players in the country. And then also they had like a DMV, DC, Baltimore select team. So it was like a USA Jordan team versus um, the, the, the DMV All-Stars. Um, 
I think it's called the Jordan Classic now. Um, Eastern Invitationals, I did pretty well. Um, didn't go there that much. I went there once, I think. Um, but the bulk of my hardware in high school, I mean, came from um, Five Star um, and the Adidas camp that I went to. But Adidas was more exposure, and I went there younger. Um, but I feel like those camps... Going to those summer camps, playing against, you know, the best 200, best 300 kids, supposedly in the country, made me real competitive. And, you know, I've always been naturally competitive at a lot of things um, internally. So basketball was my passion. So I, you know, I wanted to prove to everybody around me, my peers, friends, family, and just anybody watching that was, like, a really good player. I think it worked out for me pretty well for a bit. Oliver, I won uh, two national championships, uh, one in Florida, and the other one, I think, was in Cleveland. Um, Reggie was on uh, those teams. Shout out to Reggie Bryant. One of the smoothest, most efficient offensive powerhouses when he got going ever to this day. Um, he showed me a lot offensively. I mean, everybody kind of knew me as more of a defensive quick player, but... You know, playing with Reggie at Villanova, like, he really helped my game expand a lot when I was in college. Um, I mean, the Catholic League uh, Player of the Year and most outstanding player my senior year uh, in school, I think I ended up with 14,000, almost 1,450, 14, 14, so 1,450 points. Uh, I think it was like seven, 763 assists. Uh, I also made um, All-County Player of the Year um, my junior and senior year. And then I made the All-County first team, I think it was three years, three out of my four years in high school. Um, I think the most recent award I got, or it was a while ago, maybe, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago, was uh, I made the Baltimore Catholic League Hall of Fame. So that was actually a pretty cool experience. Um, not a lot of people can say they made the Baltimore Catholic League Hall of Fame. Um, so that was, I was extremely grateful. And honestly, um, my toughest, I feel like every time we play like Reggie at Calvert Hall, and honestly, to me back then, I feel like it was it was between us and, 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 and Towson Catholic while I was there. Um, going into my junior, sophomore, junior, senior years, um, my sophomore year, actually, let me stop that. It was the Mark Karcher and Juan Dixon show in the Baltimore Catholic League. Like, if you wanted to do anything or be anybody, you had to go through them, too, at that time. So shout out to those two. But I played them primarily, you know, one season. Um, they were a little older. So I would say, like, going through the Catholic League um, plan, it was always, always Reggie. Um, probably up until... You know, maybe when, you know, going into our senior years when everybody around everywhere knew we were going to Villanova together. But, you know, after that, you know, I kind of looked at Reggie a lot differently then. But um, I would say, like, to me, the one guy who I feel like in the Catholic League that I never could do anything with, honestly, was LaFonte Johnson. Tay was like, to me, looking back, watching him play in the Catholic League, it was like, he was the man. Like, LaFonte Johnson was the man for Towson Catholic. In my mind, like, if I had any shot to say that, like, I was a good player, a good point guard, like, I had to play well, do well. We had to make sure we won. But honestly, while he was, you know, he was a little older as well, we never beat, uh, I don't think we beat Towson Catholic while he was there. Um, I think this is more of my younger years. But I would say... The biggest rival was always, and I hate to say it, because Buckethead is my favorite player for real, for real, all times. And, like, we still talk to this day, and, like, I love this guy. He Every time I hear about him, he he, he definitely brightens my day. It's Keith Jennifer, man. I mean, Keith, he was like, I mean, I vividly remember watching the high school sports show, you know, junior, senior year. And at some points, I'm looking at the numbers he was putting up in games when we weren't playing against him. I mean, he had a couple 35, 40 point games in a row. I'm looking like, I don't know. He might beat me out for this play of the year in the conference, man. This guy is a problem. But, I mean, every time I played against those three, I think it's Reggie, LaFonte, 
and keep Jennifer in the Catholic League. You had to bring your A game. People's moves, trying to learn how to do, you know, that step cross that Keefe had and, and LaFonte, the way he came off screens and was so efficient using y'all. That their big men, you know, it was either he come off one shot or he was in the lane, dishing it, making the right pass, making everybody better. Um, and Reggie was just, Reggie was just a nonstop, relentless scorer, man. And, you know, you would hate to, to play against Reg and Reg get it going because once Reg started making a couple shots, honestly, it was really in high school nothing you could do with Reg. Like, those three guys, you know, uh, uh, opposite me really, really pushed me. Like, they were always, like, you know, at certain points while I was playing in the Baltimore Catholic League in my head, thinking about like I gotta be as good as them like I gotta I gotta make sure when I play them I play well I gotta I gotta do I gotta win those games like you know it, it was always do or die you know and and you know from those experiences playing with them and competing with them I think you know with at least two out of three I've developed great relationships um shout out to all three of those guys as well but yeah, I think those three were definitely three in the Baltimore Castle League that were like, yeah, I need to, I need to step up every day, <laughs> every game we played them because if not, yeah, you was going to get exposed.